Thanks. So again, not to uh, take up too much time here, um, I'd like to introduce to uh, Anshal Lau from um, Staffordshire University. They're all yours. Thank you so much. Good afternoon to all of you, and thank you so much for making time for attending this presentation. I'm very excited to present this research project that I've been working from last couple of years and showcase to you a version of it before its launch in, uh, next month. So in this uh, presentation, I'll cover the existing digital learning landscape, and we'll also talk about why do we need an interactive roadmap and theoretical underpinnings. And then I'll talk about the four phases in detail of the roadmap that I've created. And lastly, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A and some discussion. And firstly, to introduce myself, like uh, Chris already mentioned, my name is Anshul Lau. I'm currently working as the team lead for Teaching Innovation and Learning Enhancement Hub at Staffordshire University. I have been a digital technologist from last 12 years and have worked at several institutions and places, as you can see. I've put the logos of different institutions I'm working with. Currently, I'm working with Staffordshire University and also work with British Reserve Army in their virtual training development team, which is a newly formed unit that was launched pre post COVID. And I'm working as a consultant with them. And I'm accredited Lego Series Play facilitator. I'm passionate about accessibility, playful learning, virtual reality simulation, and online course designing. And more recently, I've been doing a course in from Alan Turing Institute, it's data science and AI in education with AI picking up everywhere. So firstly, I would like to talk about the current landscape in digital education as we all know that digital education is rapidly evolving industry. So it presents both opportunities as well as challenges. And one of the biggest hurdle that we come across is staff upskilling and uh, Upskilling uh, can range from uh, for a new staff member or even the staff that have been working for a long time. Because te which technology rapidly evolving, it becomes a quite often exercise for the staff to play catch up with technology and catch up with their skills. And this continuous catching up sometimes causes a technology, creates technological barriers, but also psychological barriers because it creates, it's a significant roadblock that the fear of just catching up and knowing what's upcoming and new and being innovative and with so many initiatives or recognition schemes that are launched at different institutions, some people would be called a champion. So nobody want to be left behind and that causes psychological as well as technological barrier. And moreover, one of the significant uh, challenges, lack of structured approach to digital education and training. Because uh, with the absence of a structured approach to staff development and uh, structure to training, the colleagues do not feel supported or they, there is not a clear vision for the staff that what are the skills that I need to be upskilling myself with. And majority of the institutions or organizations, staff are not even familiar with the range of offerings or support that are already in place at their organization. So with all the challenges laid down, now we'll be talking about why do we need a roadmap and, and is it even necessary? So just take an example, like if you're planning on a long road journey and you are making your way through without a map or a GPS in place, so eventually you will all make up to your destinations, but in at what cost? So it'll cost you time, resources, and lost opportunities. So in a way, if you're using GPS, it'll tell you the shortest route, more efficient route, and would give you some options of key places you can visit on the way. And so in a way, roadmap would be essential element for guiding you through what things that you need to be considered about and working towards for your own professional development. And I must mention, this is not one size fits all approach. The one of the beauties of the roadmap is it's highly flexible and adaptable. Like every individual, every organization, every department is distinct. So the model, the roadmap I'll be showcasing you soon in the next few slides. Uh, it's all customizable model. And uh, also to enhance the engagement and mastery, I think I, what I would uh, want to say here is that I think we are focusing on an environment where staff 
should focus on mastering their skills that they already have or build build up upon their skills so the road map is not just talking about creating new skills or new opportunities it's actually building upon your existing skills so we are talking about a level of proficiency where uh, we are talking about level of prof- proficiency i think it gives you an opportunity to explore what is available and engage with it and that actually requires a methodological and very well thought out and systematic approach so we have talked about uh, what and we have t- talked about why now i'll be talking about how how this model was created like i mentioned working at different places so this i must emphasize here so this model is not actually implemented at staffordshire university i started working on this roadmap model when i was working at university of nottingham before my current role as an e learning manager during covid that was an opportunity where being a massive university we came across that majority of the staff were struggling to be aware of what is actually existing how can they engage with resources it could be tools products events and everything all together so that came in idea of coming up with a road map all the road map exists for different organizations even different industry providers would have it but i just felt that working at different institution i just felt having a road map for an institutional digital learning vision or clarity of that would be really essential so this road map have been developed with underpinning theoretical principles with a uh, grounding adult learning around uh, adult learning theory which emphasizes that all adults and are very distinct and unique and so as their technological experiences and preferences when we acknowledge the diversity of all the individual learners or staff members at our institution so this road map was able to accommodate more inclusive environment and offerings to them irrespective of what kind of experiences or knowledge frame of that you already might have with you and another pillar that it leans on is constructivism so it's not about creating new skills or offering new skills it's about building on what you already have like i mentioned earlier so imagine working in an environment that recognizes uh, your ex- uh, current existing skills and gives you more opportunities to build layer and low layer on the skills that you might build on or what you already might have so the model that i'll be presenting in uh, the next slide so it's uh, clearly focused on user centric design right from all the modules to the framework and to all the events resources are all centered around keeping the user in mind and it's highly flexible and scalable because like i mentioned earlier so it's the model that i'll be showcasing is replicable and i'll be launching it next towards the next month so that everybody can have a copy customize it to your department's need organizational needs and flexibility just comes with your particular needs because uh, i'll come to the next slide first uh, so this is the model that the road map i've created as you can see it's uh, having four different stages so this model is offering the value added product services advices or any kind of guidance existing at institution to be made available to the staff members uh, across the institution so this model has multi modality and multi split of resources uh, conveying that it's just more inclusive in nature and like our students our staff are also diverse so we would need diversity of resources to accommodate the needs of each individual learner so for four phases it just conveys that its four phases are preparation planning delivery and follow up it just conveys that support and uh some support and the required kind of uh, guidance that you need is available at every phase of uh, uh hybrid working and uh, teaching experiences so right from a preparation stage for attending a induction program in planning to attend some workshops in delivery in having one to one support and in follow up so i'll take you through each phase and how distinct they are so in the preparation phase so the critical point is about evaluating what kind of learning needs you are aiming to address in your institution in your department in in whichever kind of respective 
thing that you need a roadmap for, even it could be your teaching framework. If you need a roadmap, just need to evaluate what kind of learning requirements that you are trying to address and what will be the fundamental skills or the aspect that the people or stakeholders need to possess to clearly carry out their job. So in this particular, I've just added, a, this is, I must mention, this is a screenshot of a 2D map that was created before the interactive because of the presentation mode. I couldn't present the interactive mode. Interactive mode is built on ThingLink, which is very interactive. You can click on any, any strand. It will take you to a resource that might be basically a hyperlinked on different kind of places in your university's website or organization's website. So it can, it has a couple of videos. It has also potential of capturing feedback. So I'll come down to preparation. So in this one, it focuses on the foundational skills that the staff or the colleagues must have in terms of digital learning. So it focuses on induction and background, showcases the advantages of core technologies, and it's even embedding the guided learner journey model in the programs and consistent delivery of modules. This is basically taking them through different frameworks and pedagogical approaches people need to be aware of that can surmount from community building workshops to induction on core technologies that we currently use Blackboard in the previous institution we use Moodle. So signing up for, on those workshops. So this basically people do not need to go to 10 different places and find information on a website. This model would basically give out every possible link that people might need or throughout their working experience at any institution or an organization. And the next phase is uh, uh, planning. Planning is a very critical phase because in this, you need to address the needs of independent or different respective stakeholders and meeting the needs. I mean that it's multimodality of resources and uh, guidance that you need to provide. Some have to be in person, some have to be video to accommodate different learning styles and different priorities and engagement that colleagues might already have. So these are, these range from hybrid pedagogy workshops, hybrid, so it could be in person or that we do offer some workshops where somebody can join online and also join in person. So it doesn't make a difference on the learning kind of experience. So it's all practical based as well as it, it can be delivered through online workshops as well. So there are colleagues supporting the online participants and in person, different colleagues are supporting. And initial assessment and module learning design plan. So it's very critical to build in some evaluation and feedback mechanism at a planning stage. So you can evaluate whether your model that you're delivering or the workshops that you're delivering would meet the requirements of the stakeholders or, or the staff that you are ad addressing the model for. And then based on like currently we're working on simulation. So we have mixed reality uh, teaching workshops, video guides, online tutorials, and central training workshops. So in addition to all the workshops and the links to different things that you can have, it can also signpost you to some existing videos that has already been created. So working at different institutions, I've realized that sometimes different departments might not collaborate well with each other and different departments literally just recreate the wheel or central training resources just for their own bespoke department or colleagues. So having a central resource would scale out resources and people do not need to recreate resources. So whenever somebody is updating, they can update the roadmap instead. That can be accessed by everybody in the university. The next delivery phase is even more important. And delivery phase is about delivering the resources or the to the particular requirements of first staff. So these are bespoke workshops that we deliver. And these are virtual and uh, ongoing uh, support for online in online as well. So this offers more over training to academic staff in what's the difference between delivering a blended course to a flexi learn hybrid course or an online course like our previous colleague have mentioned about online courses and different things even in the keynote. So we give a comprehensive understanding on online courses. It's I think when you're giving a training, it's not just about giving a familiarity, but also giving an experience of how a online courses is being taught and delivered having a in person or first hand experience of being taught a course that makes a huge difference. So this roadmap even conveys all the workshops and things that would deliver. And most important phase of the roadmap comes in the follow up stage. In the follow up stage, we are just telling that this roadmap is not just a one time event. 
that you come sign up for a workshop and it's finished. So follow phase help us to evaluate all the offerings that we have delivered through be it induction through preparation, planning or delivery, just to evaluate on all the offerings. And this also gives us an opportunity to uh, recognize and kind of evaluate the skills and difference it has made to the colleagues teaching experience or be it professional skills, because there are feedback mechanism that has been built up. There are some pilot groups that are ongoing. So each element that we do is attached with the feedback. So it gives us a possibility of improvising on the offerings that we are making. So it ranges from virtual meetings to office works. It's literally about knocking people's offices just to give them an opportunity if they want to speak or if they have anything to ask about or talk about, they can do. We have a range of master classes which talks about using mobile apps to multimedia in courses, learning design to assessments. And also through this, we can also introduce some kind of acknowledgement schemes. Like we have recently launched a diversity with module innovation scheme. So if in case you have been to a couple of workshops, if you've been to five workshops, this is an opportunity. So this is a model that how we have gamified. If you have been to any five workshops, you can participate in the diversity with module innovation scheme, which the criteria is representation, accessibility, challenge, and transformation. So this also schemes like this or an acknowledgement aspect basically encourages people to attend more workshops as long as they're familiar with the offerings that are available. So it's really helpful. So as I've made a road in this map, so in the actual model, there are it's a little orientation is a little different, but it just conveys that you might be a very tech savvy person or you might have just started. This roadmap is for everybody. So if you take rights a road directly in the delivery stage or a follow-up stage, so you can participate in all kinds of training or resources that is available for you at the university. Like I mentioned, we have gamified this model and I've, I've created the actual model using ThingLink. I'll be create, sharing the link using a QR code openly. So if feel free to use it, replicate it to your own customized needs. And I think gamification just boosts curiosity as well as commitment. And we have introduced acknowledgement schemes through uh, digital badges. And more importantly, I would also like to mention that the model I'm creating for a personalized institution is a two tier. So we have got another framework, which is digital transformation framework, which is having three different levels. One is foundational skills. One is transformation skills. One is elevation skills. Foundational skills model is based on the skills that you must have as an academic staff or a professional staff. These are the courses you must attend. Then the transformational skills are the courses that you should attend that would elevate your experience and transform your experience with maybe learning more about using Blackboard or your particular VLE, how to be more innovative in assessments, use of chat GPT, how to run workshops using artificial intelligence. And also the last stage is elevation. Elevation skills are the skills that you can have. That these are not mandatory or skills that you should have or you must have. These are the skills that you can have. So these are sim use of simulation or use of uh, VR technologies in your education. So we are experimenting with different technologies, even from drone to different aspects. So these are the skills that you can have. So these are gamification has really added a great value and significantly increased the participation. So we have done soft launches of this model to seek feedback internally before formally launching it externally. So by gam gamifying this model earlier before that, just sharing through link, we had 300 people who participated in a span of three months. But after we gamified and introduced different badges and uh, kind of collided with this digital transformation model, we have overall 1700 staff which have actively participated and have been earning badges throughout. So I must mention about the few benefits of interactive roadmap. Well, I've already mentioned few. Like I must mention, it provides a scaffolded multi-model training and support system. So it conveys to the staff what is available at the university and what kind of support they can seek from an institution. And it creates an immersive environment for active learning. And it also offers various range of activities, support, offering, services. Absolutely fine. And uh, guidance that is provided at the university. And more importantly, I may, must mention when you're 
clearly conveying the digital kind of transformation vision to your academic staff or making it very transparent to everybody in the university or your institution, then it naturally builds trust and confidence of staff upon the institution in knowing what kind of vision the university holds and what kind of support is overall available at the university. Because majority of the time staff are still struggling with knowing about what workshop is coming, what kind of support is available at the university. And the professional staff struggle with uh, the numbers that people, number of people who are attending their workshops. So I think this model is basically addressing the training and development gap, which has held us back. And just to uh, everybody be more upskilled and addressing the upskilling uh, challenge that I mentioned earlier. And it also issues regarding the quality of support and the scaffolded nature of resources and support available at the university, making it more accessible uh, in nature. So I must mention the, the current plan before the even launch is currently the re refining the roadmap. Even going forward, we'll be seeking feedback from colleagues. So the aim is about co-designing and developing it further in partnership with the staff. So even the vision is to expand it further to different areas in relation to student learning as well as community building as well. So refining the roadmap with evolving products and services and support provision would be another key priority because the digital kind of landscape evolving so often and so sooner, we will be incorporating new products and services that can be delivered through a roadmap. And I must have mentioned about what, how, and why. I must mention now, what do I mean by broad impact and application. I have lightly touched upon it earlier. So take this roadmap that I showed you as a template that you can replicate in your department in your own particular scope of your organization. And it can not only address or meet the individual needs, but can also address the needs of organizational strategic priorities, as well as policies, as long as you're clear on the needs and the aim that you're addressing with the roadmap. So it's, I would say it's beyond the training tool and it's the, the flexibility and adaptable characteristic of this roadmap makes it very efficient and very usable format. And I must mention that it's, it's highly accessible. It's not just mean in terms of engagement, what we are trying to achieve it to make the roadmap more understandable and usable by colleagues so that they can engage with it. And what I meant by scalable and replicable is that I'll be sharing the roadmap link, which you can literally customize in real time with, with your needs, be it around student needs or your teaching approach. Or if you're a digital learning professional, you can literally make it for a specific department colleagues as well. And uh, it's focusing the entire roadmap that I've created is based on five uh, fundamental principles that are grounded in the approach of this model, which would be around digital fluency, digital infrastructure, collaboration, innovation, and inclusivity. So we have made sure that the model is not missing out on any of these elements. And it's, it's more understandable and, and it's helping the academic staff as well as professional staff colleagues. So lastly, as conclusion, I must mention that the roadmap was an aim just to lay out the foundation for staff upskilling. And it just lays out clear vision for the staff and professional colleagues across the institution about digital learning vision or as well as organizational priorities, whatever they, that might be. And it also provides uh, a surety to the support staff as well as entire uh, teaching staff about the support that is available and is offered to them for hybrid working and teaching practices. And the model is very innovative and with in terms of offerings because it can accommodate videos, offering advice, it can provide some existing resources and it can e easily be copied over and all the things are linked to your iCal in invites as well. So automatically if somebody signs up, it even builds up a calendar invite in your uh, calendars as well as it also have a mechanism of build a build in mechanism of capturing feedback as well. And uh, I think the plan is going forward is to incorporate new features and tools into the platform because we are currently trying out to build it into a 
virtual environment as well. So if in case, if you want to incorporate tests in a different environment, so we'll also be sharing the model for replicating into a virtual learning environment as well. I think that'll be all. So overall, it's a roadmap that they have created. It, it's been a progressing process that has taken me working at different institutions, different experiences that this has been projected. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have now or any discussion you want to have. Thank you, Anshul. Uh, can we just uh, give Anshul a round of applause, please? Thank you. Um, as a geography graduate, I do love a good map. So thank you for that. Um, what questions do we have for Anshul? Yes, please. Uh, yes, if you, you first. Well, I want to know a little bit about the education model. Because it sounded like a lot of watching videos. I'm assuming it's not. It's not about watching videos. It's about basically the roadmap was uh, it's about showcasing and scaling out what kind of resources and overall support is available for the staff at the university. And it's not just about watching videos. It's about signing up with different resources and signing up with different initiatives, guidance, and you can even schedule one to one meetings. So it's very interactive. So interactivity would include some videos, some guidance, some training provision, some providing feedback. Some actually calling in a person to scale, uh, arrange a meeting and participating in some award scheme, signing up. So it's, it, I would even suggest that it's not even full of hyperlinks. So it's, it's very interactive in nature. That's why I called it interact, interactive roadmap. I'm afraid I couldn't show the interactivity of this roadmap that is currently in development, but this is the 2D image that I showed that can reflect the essence and impact it can have. Thank you. Oh, I would suggest that's a very good question, but I would say that it's basically about enforcing an opportunity on them. So even if it's being enforced on them, it's presenting an opportunity. So it's not taking away their time from them. It's offering them more confidence with the support and offerings that could be offered at like across the institution. So it's basically, I think so far, I've, we have all had very positive feedback with staff struggling to find resources, going to different tabs and digging into website to find a single link. It's just clearly laying out everything. So we are even building it for a strategic roadmap for at our institution which has been really helpful for senior leadership and head of departments to aware of different training and different things that you need to sign up with. It includes e-learning courses. So in addition to videos, it also in includes e-learning courses. As long as you click on something, it'll launch an e-learning course for you. And we are also capturing the uh, analytics of how well people have engaged. And the gamify element is just boosting the engagement and just creating curiosity among staff members. So. I would say curiosity in a very positive manner. People would want to engage with it. People would want to know what are the offerings available at the university. So some are, some have been in fact suggested by staff members. The follow-up has all been based on the suggestions that we have got from colleagues. So earlier we did not have provision of master classes scaled out here or office works was something new that was suggested by colleagues that I've never experienced like a marketing person going and knocking on people's offices. But so far, the colleagues have got very positive experiences that we as a digital learning team have been portrayed as a department which is very reachable and approachable. So it's just a level of confidence that you build on staff that can even help with retention because majority of the staff, even if somebody is leaving an institution, just would feel that their staff is, this institution is not preparing them for future or they're not able to keep up. So that significant roadblock is just catching up definitely affects their uh, uh, technological barriers would definitely affect their motivation, I would say. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's time. Thank um, you. Can we just give a... Thank you so much.